Internet, it's your boy Scruffy King here. We're playing a little bit of Dota Turbo mode and we are playing Bristleback. Uh, why did I pick Bristleback this game? Uh, it's simply because, you know what, I thoroughly enjoy the hero. I think he's not played nearly enough. He's actually com extremely dangerous and he can be a complete nightmare for the other team. So um, I'm just taking him battle. top here and um, I'm going to see what I can do. So yeah, in our team we also have the Medusa, we've got a Chaos Knight, Shadow Fiend, Weaver. So looking at that lineup, that is why I decided to go with the Bristleback. Simply because I feel like we needed some kind of tank. Chaos Knight in the beginning, sure, he has a little bit of tankiness to him. Same with the Medusa, but early game not so much. Later on, sure, they transition and get really big. But in the beginning, you know, Bristleback is just that early game absolute monster that big tank that's just dealing out damage and you need to get rid of him or else your team is really going to suffer but anyway enough about that into the game itself so uh, yeah the reason I took that rune and I didn't give it to the weaver is simply because I thought the weaver was going to go for the steel up at the top rune obviously you can see that didn't work out so well and um, to be honest, it was a little bit of a, a, a complicated pick off here because I did, as I say before, I did solo queue. Um, we are not the best players in the world. I'm pretty sure no one here is even above 5k MMR. But um, we play Dota for the fun of it, you know. Uh, it isn't a full team, but uh, we're going to see what we can do here. So I get trapped up by the Disruptor, but it's not a big deal, you know. That, that's, that's the beauty of Bristol. You can just stand there and smash them. If you're wondering about my beginning item build, I picked up the Ring of Protection because I wanted to finish up that uh, Ring of Basilius. The Mango itself, that is just simply because, um, as most of you may know, when it comes to all pick turbo mode, all those kinds of things, what happens is you have a pool of heroes that um, can be selected for randomized. And if you pick one of those heroes, you get a bonus of a free Mango at the start of the game, which I think is a hell of a lot of fun, which also incentivized me to really pick Bristle, because why not, you know? Even as an item on its own, that Mango itself gives you that HP regen. I mean, you know, it, it's for free, so why not? Obviously, no courier was purchased here, simply because this is turbo mode. So I bought the Ring of Basilius first, just because I feel like, especially since I'm going to be spamming the Call Spray, I just need that little bit of regen. This Elder Titan is super scary with that Stomp. Something you're going to want to avoid at all costs. Um, but right now, you know, it's just early landing stage. Just basically the objective is to stay alive. But got a great pick off there that raise from the shadow fiend really helped me out there one right click game over um elder titan got a little bit deleted there definitely thought i needed the boots and the arcane uh, and then obviously upgrade to arcane boots from there just because i feel like i need the mobility and you know people really disregard the fact that bristleback can be very heavily mana dependent especially if you want to harass this early you know, what you want to do is you want to run in the front and you just want to spam your quill spray. And that's also why I didn't even bother going for the nasal goo. Simply because, you know, um, that nasal goo is all well and good, but mana is such an issue for this hero, especially in the early, early stages of the game. It's very, very difficult to, um, you know, to keep your mana levels high enough to be able to spam both those abilities. So why not just prioritize the one, get the one to do you a hell of a lot of damage and do a lot of work for you, and then take it from there. So I got my arcane boots online, again, to reiterate, this is turbo mode, so that is why all of this is happening so quickly. Right now my plan is to just, you know, be in the way. At the moment, another pick up on that, um, on that disruptor, he is super squished, that's the problem. And you know, like I, like I said, those cool sprays are scary. This was definitely a misplay from me. I didn't expect that sleep to come out so quickly. Or, um, what is that Elder Titan ability called? It's called a, a Stomp. I didn't expect that ability to come out so quickly and do that much damage to me. Um, and of course I did dive under the tower. We got the kill, but it definitely wasn't worth it. I feel like that was a completely unnecessary death on my part. But hey, uh, it is what it is. All you can do is get back into it, right? Now that I'm back, same old story. Just spamming that cool spray. Really getting those stacks up, really causing the hurt on those guys, getting that harassment in. And of course I picked Bristle back as well, just because he has an absolutely beautiful immortal that I've got equipped at the moment. The 
So yeah, now the plan is, um, the reason we're down here is simply just, you know, to get a little bit of farm while the lane is pushed out. You know, it's no good for us, us to be sitting there under their tower trying to last hit creeps. Rather, move out of the way. Take a creep camp, you know, let the lane push out. This was scary for me. Luckily for me, I had the good sense to... Oh, oh yes, dodging those like a champ. Um, had the good sense to run towards this side rather than back towards my tower simply because I'd run right into them. And that's a dead disruptor. People also tend to underestimate the right click damage of this hero, especially as soon as I've got my level 6. I mean, that war path allows me increased damage per stack, increased movement, increased stack duration, you know. All that happens is now suddenly the more magic damage I'm doing to you, the harder I hit. And that just sucks. Drow's making her first appearance for the game, doing heavy damage. Nothing I could do. Running towards her would have been useless. I mean, the Shadow Fiend had the damage. He took her out in the end, but... I think, honestly, that was the best play for me. Run towards your tower, run towards safety, hope, hope that that range isn't going to take you out. So far, it's still looking good for my team. Granted, I thought we were a lot further ahead when I was actually in the game. Um, it's a 6-2 lead for us, but as you can see, the gold bonus is very low. And again, same old story. You know, the lane's a little bit pushed out, and I also feel like... The reason I was sitting here in the jungle trying to uh, get these creeps was simply to give my Shadow Fiend a bit of space. But it was at this point, you know, I saw the Weave and I thought, okay, Weaver's here, we can definitely go in. Just one qu Quill Spray, one more for the fans, can we get it? Beautiful. Now the Elder Titan is trying with the Stomp, but now that he's missed that, he's got no Disable, so it's perfectly justified to go in here. And there it is. Fantastic. I'm sure the bug could have done the work, but it really doesn't hurt to go in for that kill secure. You know, people talk about kill steal and so on. I'm personally not a proponent of that. I feel like if the team gets the kill, that's more important. You know, if the team gets the kill, that is far more important than one specific hero. Don't get me wrong, it's great for the team if your carries are the ones getting the kills, but at the same time, if a support feels like he should be throwing in an ability, or you yourself feel like you want to throw in an ability just to secure that kill, there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. You want to rather throw that extra ab ability and get the kill, than run the risk of completely missing it. You know what I mean. Last hitting a little bit abysmal there. And it was at this point I was thinking to myself, you know what, I'm doing enough damage. My damage is fine. What I need to be doing is putting the hurt out on people. You know, um, I mean, I need to be standing there, you know. I'm already putting the hurt out on people. My call spray is going out. It's causing that damage. But I really need to tank up so I can just stand there forever. Because that is terrible for the enemy team. So yeah, it's a strong start here. 6, 2, and 2. Um, and in case you're wondering, I am spamming my Call Spray just to get these Warpath stacks up. Every time you cast an ability, the Warpath stacks. Then you hit harder, you hit faster, all that kind of stuff. Mid tower is going to hopefully go down here, and then there's the Drow. Absolutely scary, but this time I thought, you know what, no fear. Let me just go in. If I die, I die. It's better than running, and luckily the Weaver comes in. Big props to the Weaver there, he's really helping me out here, getting a couple of slows in. Beautiful. Weaver deserves that kill completely. Without him, I would have died there for sure. Absolutely, no question about it. It was just at this point I felt like that going in was better than running away. Because if I go in on that draw, I at least have a chance of killing him. If I run, I just die. Axe jumps in on me, doesn't realize I have the DD. Sees the DD, sees the Weaver, realizes it's doing no damage, off he runs. And that is why that plate mail is so good. That extra armor, oh, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So right now it's just a game, uh, it's just a game of, do I want to push out the mid? Do I want to um, head down to the bottom? Where do I want to go at the moment? You know, the thing is though, that mid tower is so low, my, my thoughts were if I just bash this down really, really quickly, even if i got to put my body on the line for it, it's really good just to give us that advantage, because then we've taken out pretty much two of their tier ones, it's only the bottom lane left, it's an easy transition for my team. But granted, with everyone there, it's a little bit scary. Elder Titan, ult's coming out, I think that was a misplay on his part. Look, they do have the tower, but there's no one there, there's no one to get sucked into that Elder Titan ult. 
for those of you who don't know, when the Elder Titan casts his ult, it tends to suck you towards that center, that center piece. So even if you're outside of that crack, what you should look at doing is um, also moving further away because there's no guarantee that you're actually going to get out of there. Really in the thick of things here, luckily I managed to get the wand off, get out of range of that Titan Stomp, and that Weaver's just doing work. Super risky play there by me, I don't know if I should have gone in, but made it. Not even close, right? Not even close. TP out, be safe, take it. I mean, what else do I want? What else do I want? I made it out of there alive, we got two kills out of it. Look, they got the return kills, but it's not worth it for me to stick around. I was on like no health, that is honestly the best scenario that could have played out for me. It was also at this point I realized that my game was playing far too close to my bristleback. I couldn't understand why my vision was so limited at the time. And obviously, you know, you don't check for these things. You just just think, oh, you know what, it's just um, my game settings are what they are. Can't possibly have been changed. But for some reason in this instance, it was zoomed in. So um, you'll see that now all of a sudden I have a lot more vision. I have a lot more um, gauge for what's going on around me, which is also fantastic. So my thoughts here were, you know what, um, let me let me try farm up that Sheevas. Let me try get that item. Um, pushing now by myself isn't going to help. If I can slowly rotate towards the bot to try get something done there, that'll be a win. But otherwise, um, but otherwise, just farm up a little. See if I can't snake a bounty. Not worth it. I did actually just see someone up top there. So in we're going here. I am a little worried about the DK stun, but I do know that I have the backup. There we go, the minus armor from the Chaos Knights. Sure, that's a great taunt from the Axe, but he only caught the Chaos Knights in that. Easy kill. Now I'm going a little bit deep, but it's because I know that Axe is dead, and I know that they're split up. Their positioning is not so great, and if I force them back, it zones, out the, it zones them out so that they can't help their Disruptor, which is also a very, very big deal. It is a big deal for me, because it means that I can really go in and put the hurts on them, and it's a big deal for them. Also something interesting, did you notice there that that gust did not cancel my TP? I think that is absolutely fantastic. That is something that happens far too much. Um, you know, the, um, people think that, oh yeah, I've got a gust, I can just run in, I can gust, and then I'll cancel out the TP. But even though that gust is a knockback, it does not Dyer's stop your TPs. So you can actually get those TPs in no problem. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. All right, so now we're just rotating to the bottom here. I'm Radiant thinking, can I get there? Is it worth it? Even if I don't get it, I can maybe just kind of go in and provide a little bit of support. Denied their bottom tower. Radiant's middle tower can't handle this deluge. All righty. Now we're on our way back up there. Sorry guys, that was super loud in my ears. I don't know what happened. The volume just kicked up in a crazy way. Okay. Anyways, now we're doing our thing. You know, just getting a little bit more farm. Almost at our Shivas. That's going to be great. You know, that slow, that general tankiness. The intelligence bonus for my mana regen. All good stuff. Good stuff. And there's that scary draw again. Thought I'd cast that slower down. There's nothing I can do here. Hoping to chase her off. It worked surprisingly. That was completely just a mind game. I do not win that fight ever. I do not win that matchup. There is no scenario where I win that matchup. It just, I uh, honestly was just trying to play a mind game on the draw. If she sees me turning, she thinks my team is following me, she backs up. She is a draw ranger. You know, very squishy hero. Rather safe than sorry. So yeah, just running around doing bristleback things, um, you know, as a bristle it's really difficult to pinpoint what um, your main focus is other than just being around. You just want to be in fights, you want to be a disruption, you want that quill spray going on. And right now I just thought, you know, that casual little bit of regen would also be good for me, you know. Get a healing self going on, get that health up, especially considering you're playing, on you're playing on turbo mode, you know, there's no downside to just buying one or two little healing selves, getting them in, popping them and be back on your way. You're not running a risk to the courier. You're not running a risk to yourself. And there's the Drow Ranger with that Invers. So annoying. So annoying. 
Honestly, I think detection should have been something that I bought a lot earlier in this game. Uh, looking back at it now. Now watch here. Do you see how it pulled that Chaos Knight in? That is something that that ult does. That is something that people need to take um, take care to notice. You know, stay as clear as you possibly can. Oh, that catch on the draw is amazing. That's huge for us. Because now they've got no right click. They've got the DK left. There's nothing he can do on his own. Thought about chasing him down. Can I get him? You know, the goose stacks are really the main goal here. Another big reason to go for that Shivas is that slow, you know. If people are around you and they're trying to run away as a bristle, you hit them with that big Shivas guard, creates that slow, and then you can just catch up to them and keep hitting them with the goose stacks and the quill spray. I thought, yeah, you know what, let me just get that regen going on again. Um, just because it was a bit of a hard fight, they're going to respawn soon. I need my HP. Alright, smacking into this mid tower. Really hoping to get something done. I mean, that Weaver and Medusa are really putting out some lack of damage for us as well. And Chaos Knight is nothing to laugh at. He can also really put the hurting on you. Okay, this axe is very scary. You got a great big taunt in, but they're ultimately going to get it. Nice Weaver ult there. Managed to get out. We unfortunately lost the Medusa and the Shadow Fiend there, but it is what it is. Going in on this, I don't know if it's the right call. Kamikaze, let's just do it. I thought to myself, I remember thinking to myself at that point, if I'm going to die to kill this Drow, it's absolutely worth it. I will take that trade every single time. Because that Drow herself is actually the scariest person on their team. You know, she just needs to pop in, hit that right click. And it was at this point I'm feeling a little bit cocky. You know, I'm 8-2-13. and 13. Let's get something nice and disruptive. Something to keep that damage going. So why not go for a Radiance? Why not just stand there in the middle and on top of my Quill Spray just be hitting them with that Radiance damage? And also it's good for me considering that Drow right click, it gives me that evasion. You know, for those of you unaware, um, you'll see now in a second as soon as that Radiance gets delivered to me, that the Radiance itself um, does actually give evasion. You know, it becomes a lot harder to hit heroes when they've got that going on as well. Yeah, you know, uh, causes them to miss 17% of their attacks. So if I'm going to use really rough maths, that's just under one-fifth. So that you're effectively denying them 20% uh, of their damage output. 17% if you're going to be absolutely accurate. Okay, this disruptor's got no chance. He's here by himself. He runs into me. What can you do? Oh, scary draw though. Doing damage on the Weaver. I see my team behind me. I'm not scared to go in. But my health is also a little bit low. I don't just want to dive that. Not looking. She got that Invis going on again. My thought is just as well. You know, I've got the Radiance going on. If she's anywhere near me, she's going to be taking those damage ticks. So, rather focus on what you can, him. Okay, got the goose stacks going on, and then as soon as I see that draw, I realize her invis is popped. It's going to be a long time before it's back online. Have to get her as quick as I can. There's the DK, and unfortunately that damage output is just disgusting. I do definitely stand by that decision. You know, I feel like that draw... Oh, also, just side note, that Medusa ult was absolutely fantastic. Stopping up that axe really just secured us that complete team wipe. Now we can really focus on the tower. Anyway... That choice I made there to go on the draw, I do not regret for a second. I would take that trade every single time, simply because our team does not have detection. So as soon as I see that that draw has popped her invis, and that invis is over, you want to go in on that. Because you know it's going to be a little while until the invis comes back. She has no other means of escape, no other means to go invisible. So you want to really just capitalize on that. Okay, dead for a little while here. I mean, 26k gold lead, it really didn't feel like that. Eh? Sure, we had the advantage and we were on the upper hand, but it didn't feel like it was that drastic. And yeah, so Weaver's doing work. You know, as soon as Weaver gets that Deso going, he's just absolutely deadly. Um, here I'm just thinking, you know what, do I want the point booster, do I want the intelligence? Um, rather went for the point booster there. 
looking back, I probably could have dismantled my arcane boots, but I wasn't thinking like that. You know, I was kind of rolling in the money. It was turbo mode. I'm thinking I'm going to get the money super quick. I literally didn't even, like, it didn't even compute for me. Like, oh, yeah, you know what? Uh, disassemble your arcane boots and use that to complete the um, ultimate orb. I mean, not the ultimate orb. The, um... Ah, forget the name of that thing. That thing that has the pink ball, the red ball, and the blue ball all together. Okay, this trial is super scary, but I'm not too worried. I don't think she's going to go in on me. I, don't, I think she's rather going to let the tower drop. Um, and I thought while we were at it, let's go for the shrine as well. Okay, easy disrupt to pick off. You can see here, he doesn't stand a chance, but there I am. All I'm thinking is Drow Ranger. Drow Ranger needs to die. Hit the Drow Ranger. Go on, Drow Ranger. Oh, and it feels good, man. Feels so good. The taunt by the axe is a little scary, but that Chaos Knight hitting him with that. Oh, absolutely beautiful. Taking the big damage. Luckily for me, though, they're focusing me down. My team has space. And that's it. Triple kill. Feeling strong, feeling beefy. Let's see what this thing's called. Soul Booster. That's what it's called. On my way to getting my um, on my way to getting my last item here. Um, that is going to really, really, really accelerate me from here on. I'm just going to become unkillable with that Octarine. I mean, with the Octarine, I've got that spell life steal. I can literally just stand there, quill spray, radiance, and I'm just not going to die. That was my thinking anyway. So yeah, now we're just, you know, farming up a little bit here, trying to make our way through this lane. The the big thing here is, you know what, we may have gone mid lane, but trying to push base now is just not the right idea. Now what you want to do is you want to capitalize on your advantage and start pushing down your lanes a little bit. You want to try to get those other set of racks. Sure, they were all dead, but um, there's no guarantee you kill that in time. And right now I'm able to get creeps all the way into their base um, to really just start doing damage on that top tower and those top racks. Axe misses his taunt there. Um, I think he misjudged the range on that blink. Medusa's got a hurricane park from what I can see there, which is also a nice big item for her. So the plan is now farm. Farm, farm, farm. Never stop farming. Um, from here I'm going into the Abyssal Blade just because, you know, um, I recognize that Drow TP and going invis and so on. If I can stun, I can lock her down. Honestly, a lot of my item builds were just built around dealing with that Drow because I felt like we didn't have any real answers for her. If Chaos Knight doesn't hit her with his ult, we're not going to be able to, um, we're not going to be able to take her out. I see the axe there. Now what I'm trying to do is, just, I'm just trying to cart him, you know. Stay out of range on that taunt. If he wants to taunt me now, it's fine because I want to be hitting him. You know, and I want him to taunt only me. I went in there, so he wastes his taunt. He draws me in, and the weaver can hit him from the back. You know, from way out there. As you can see, I'm just getting all of that regen from that um, Octarine. It's really a help. Right here, I was just checking for buyback as well. I was a little bit worried about buyback. It's, it's, it's a concern that I don't think is very necessary this specific game. But if you can develop, in, uh, develop it into a habit, that's also fantastic. You know, Always just gauge, right, how much money do I have? What do I need for buyback? Is buyback necessary? If you ask yourself that question every time before you buy a nice big item, especially at this stage in the game, it's just a good habit to have in your Dota game. Okay, that stomp hit me. There was nothing I could do. I was body blocked by the Shadow Fiend. Um, I know that ult's going to connect. It's just lucky for me that um, that Medusa coming in with that ult saved me 100%. That Medusa is now coming into her own. She's got her farm. I mean, it's just the DK now. He can't take us both on, especially with the karting we're doing here. And that's it. Absolutely fantastic play by the Medusa. If it wasn't for that ult, I would have been long gone. Axe brought back. Is it going to be enough to kill me? Yes, it is. Unfortunate. That is my fault. Um, I maybe shouldn't have been that deep, but at the same time, my team's there. Um, if I have to die, then sure, sloppy play. 
But the axe is dead, and we're getting this tower. The Medusa's pretty much soloing that thing like a monster. Yeah, you know, dead for a little while. Yeah, I'm really hoping that I can at least pull this back a little bit. I uh, got that second set of racks on the Dusa. Um, I think she really needs to help out that DK. I uh, hope she goes in here. Yes, she does. Beautiful. Ah, oh, and that just looked like a little bit of a misplay. It's okay, though. Um, you know, Chaos Knight's back. Shadow Fiend's back. We got the axe again. We got two sets of racks. Overall, it's still definitely in our favor so i'm um, hopefully when we come back as that bristle we can really just put an end to this definitely thinking the tp boots at this point um simply because you know um you you just you just want that i need to be able to get into their base i need to be able to tp to these creeps up here at the top of the at the top of the map um you know as soon as they start making their way towards their base oh absolutely broken down by those two that elder titan and the drow and that is why i'm saying that drow is super scary we need to take her out so i'm not sure whether or not to go in here i'm not sure and then I see that, I'm thinking to myself, no, it's absolutely not worth it for me. Get out, get back, defend your base. That is what you want to do. You know, waiting on their defense. Um, in terms of items, you know, only thing I can do now is drop those arcane, arcane boots for something. And um, then I'm six slotted, you know. Okay, big alt, stay clear. You see what it did there to the Medusa, something that people don't really know about that alt. Okay, I'm thinking that oak's got to be around here somewhere, and there he is. He's going in hard on our Dusa. He's got the Aegis, which is scary. But you know what, if I can at least pop that Aegis, then, it, then that's fine with me. Pop the Aegis. Hoping that the Shadow Fiend gets back. And right now my plan is to just kind of stay stay behind draw them to me stop them from attacking the tower and rather have them come in on me because i'm harder to kill i take longer to kill and that gives my team time to jump in on them as well so right now just creating that harass getting those quill stacks on there's not much i can do you know they were really focusing down those racks really hard but at the same time they are just taking heavy damage from these quill stacks they are just really really starting to hurt at this point and then I see that, uh, that Invis is popped and I'm thinking, goodbye Drow. Can I get in on him? Just need to drop a goose stack. It's all you need. And right now I'm just thinking rush push, rush push. Go, 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 go. Straight to their base. Because I mean now it's just the Drow and the Axe. Drow is very scary but I'm pretty confident she can't solo kill me at this point. Especially if she pops her Invis. If she comes out of Invis and she comes at me, she's got nowhere to run. Like that. And that is exactly why I bought that stun. Stun her out. Can't do anything. Go straight for the throne. Don't even bother with the racks. Just start going in and see what we can do on the throne. Had to avoid that taunt. Uh, that taunt. Scary thing. It doesn't matter what level you're on. You do not want to get taunted. It ruins your positioning. It ruins your gameplay. Because you know you can't really do what you want. You're just stuck attacking the axe. Or right clicking that axe. Sure, my focus was a little bit off here, but there you go. And that's the GG. Radiant victory. GG, boys. Quick game. A little bit of a stomp, in my opinion. Um, also, something I realize I'm not doing enough in my videos for you guys is um, I don't show you the scoreboard enough. So, uh, here's the scoreboard. Um, there's the scores here. Right, we have a look. GPM, I've got second highest GPM in the game on that one. Experience per minute, also second highest in... No, Allah. I think I'm third on that one behind the Weaver. The Weaver really picked it up. If we look at the graphs. 
you know, they definitely had a comeback around this point, and then we just started dominating, and it just kind of spiraled out of control. You know, if we look at net worth, um, you know what, it was actually a bit of a jostle, <laughs> but you can definitely see who was the dominating team here. From about this point, they just could not catch us anymore. And that's it. I say to you guys, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Scruffy out.